welcome back you all to the paper track. So this is our second session in the afternoon uh, session. So how is going on? Are you still okay? Your hand. Okay, okay. So the this session we will talk about the AI and the data side. As you know that right now we heard often about the AI, about the data size. So is it very interesting? And almost all the companies still apply the AI in their business. So today we got good opportunity from our speaker to tell us how to apply the agile with the AI and the data side. So please warm welcome our speaker to chat us today. Thank you. Thank you. So I think it will be pretty chill because we are quite a small group, but, but I promise it will be super informative for everyone here. Uh, slightly different from other room, right? Because the other room we focus more on like Scrum, like agile methodologies, but for this session today, and also for me, it's like my expertise is focusing more on the AI or data projects. So that will be our main focus, but then toward the end and I will touch a bit about like how do you actually apply agile or like scrum into data project. <laughs> so uh, introduce myself, my name is Mook, so I'm a country manager for Thinking Machine Data Science. So I, I think no one heard about us before, we are pretty new. We, we just start this year in Thailand, but uh, the company or we have been working for like data project for about five years now, but for Thailand, this is our first year. Uh, before I worked for Thinking Machine, this is my first year, but before that I was working on uh, like AI and data project also, but for Temasek in Singapore. I, I think you have heard about Temasek through like news or like drama, <laughs> but but we actually a really good company. We invest in portfolio like throughout like uh, the world it's not only thailand that's like only like majority of our portfolio right uh and then uh i was in the state uh study my master degree in at Carnegie Mellon, and then i also have a chance to uh work at mit so like uh, i was applying for like a sandbox program or like working on like startup ideas and uh that actually where uh i have my helper here more like, actually he's my husband, <laughs> but I bring him to help and, and we, well, he, he went to MIT to start this and uh, his focus is more on AR, VR, or like if you're interested in like metaverse or whatever, you can talk to him after this. Uh, he will help me in the workshop uh, after this. So uh, go to our agenda before we talk about my company. So for today, like the 45 minutes is actually super packed. So I have a introduction sessions, a little bit about like the company, what we do, and then we will talk about the AI and like data science, like, what, what exactly is like AI and data science. It's, it's such a buzzword nowadays, but I will just make it simple and let everyone play along with AI and you will see like it's actually easier than, than it look, right? And then after that, then we talk about the uh, AI way on how do you actually start the AI projects? And also like data project, the transformation you have. So this is the agenda for today. And then we wrap up with uh, Q and A, right? So, uh, so first section introduction a bit. So I already talked about uh, myself, but for for a company like Thinking Machine, we work for the corporate and also like NGO, uh, like the list here. Right? So these are the company who actually want to apply like data science, AI to help their work. And we just go in, partner with them, and then help them be like a better version of themselves through data different approach. Like for example, if you see like the uh, UNICEF or like World Trade Organization here, these are more NGO, but they do have use case. Like for example, uh, UNICEF or ADB, right? they, they would come to us and they were like, um, they want to know more about like poverty or so, like people who need help. Where do they go and find them? So like where, where is the best place for them to go and invest their resource, the money to help the people? So we actually bring in like data or AI to help them. And, and that's what we do here. Uh, for other company, of course, like we have Temasek because well, I met the company to working with Temasek, right? And then we have like 
uh, Philippine allies are again like helping them with like data transformation, bringing AI to help with their uh, journey on the data transformation. So, so that's what we do, pretty quick introduction. Uh, so uh, enough about myself and the company. So let's talk a bit about what, what is exactly AI. And I think I, I wrote in the HI 66 group, like trying to sell my session that what exactly is AI? So we're gonna talk about this. Uh, before we go there, so AI, uh, as you know, it's such a big word. People talk about AI a lot and well every company here adapt AI and uh, on the x-axis here uh, we have the company who is like purely digital right so like Netflix Airbnb Amazon these are like purely digital company so they already start adopting AI so like Netflix you know like the recommendation engine Airbnb also the recommendation engine and then Amazon and uh, Alexa so fun fact Alexa is now cover like uh, 100 million uh, sales, right? And everyone, uh, every tea house, one of it has like Alexa in it. So like that one third of like the houses in uh, the US. So that's pretty big market for, for AI product like Alexa's. And then we have a more traditional company here like UPS or BP. So these are more bigger company who also trying to adapt AI, but the use case is slightly different. So we have them on like, let's say, well, they want to cut down methane emissions. So how do they do that? And they have to apply a lot of IoT sensors, put it on their warehouses, their machines, and then eventually like adopting AI to predict their emission, finding the factor. So these are what like more traditional business do, right? So these are varieties of AI use cases that you can actually apply AI on. Um, then we have a term, so people talk about AI, and then we also have this term like machine learning, deep learning, um, I don't know, like math statistics. So I really like this diagram because it's explained like all the interception, right? Um, let's look at the, the yellow cycle first, like the one on the right hand side for you, right? So the yellow one, well, we have math and stats, business intelligence, Right. So this is where, well, when you talk about data science, it's actually related to like statistics. You have to learn math, you have to learn statistics, you have to know your data. This is where when you take your data out, plotting it, doing like the EDA, uh, looking at your uh, like the graph, the pattern of the data, it's falling into this category, the, the yellow uh, circle here, right? the data science part. But then data science is also quite a big word. So math and stat alone is not like cover the entire AI. Uh, you also have more advanced technique like the uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning here. So these are more advanced technologies and it's like a subset of each other like the circle here. So AI is like a broader term, cover everything. It basically means you want to teach computer to learn the human behavior, right? So that is AI. But then you have a more advanced like, or like a, a smaller scope here, which is machine learning. So that uh, is one of the technique that AI is using and then a smaller circle here, deep learning. Deep learning is like, again, another technique, but it's like a subset within machine learning itself. So this is how you actually like uh, using the different terminology, but again, well, you can actually keep like mixing the word. It is actually okay. Like when we talk about the data project, we talk about machine learning or AI, it's, it's okay to like keep mixing the word up. Like no one gonna brand you on that because it's actually overlapping like this, right? Um, well, let's go deeper into the AI. So I, I mentioned before that like uh, AI is actually mean that you want to teach the computers to learn uh, the human behavior. So that includes whether it's like your visual perception, right? When I look down the stage here, well, I see like all of you here, which is I super appreciate you show up, right? So this is like my brain knowing that, hey, there are like people here. So that's the first one that like we can teach the computer the same uh, skill, right? The second one is the speech recognitions. 
So when I speak, then uh, you know what I mean, right? So that is the same skill that we can teach computer, like Siri or Alexa have this skill set. And then we have the calculation. Well, calculation is like, it's such a simple word, but it's super powerful. So if you combine all this, well, you think about like, uh, Elon Musk try to sell like self-driving car, right? Self-driving car is uh, one of the AI that actually combine all of this. So it's combining like visual perception. Well, some cars have like speech recognitions and then the calculation is like, every time you have your car like moving forward, like every second it moves forward, it has a calculation like uh, what is the accelerators, what is the speed or the distance. So those are the complex calculation that happen like every millisecond, right? So that's how powerful it is for the calculation here. But noted here on my slide, so we, we have this. The AI was first introduced in 1955. Um, I, I don't think anyone here born like before that or like <laughs> at this year is actually like way beyond us, right? So AI is such a like I, it's a it's an old word. It's it's like introduced in 1955, but this year, if if you look at like the internet and the trends of the technology, just this five year AI is like becoming super popular. Like every conferences you would heard about AI, right? So uh, these are the lessons, these are the factors why AI is actually just like becoming super popular now. So the first one is on uh, big data. This is because now we have internet. And now that you have like mobile phone, smartphone, all the transactions, like when you purchase something, that actually create a big data set. And that is one of the uh, reason why uh, AI is getting really popular because, well, it needs a lot of data to train itself, right? So we have the big data here. And then secondly, we have the computing power. So this is the cloud, of course. Well, cloud like AWS, GCP, Azure, uh, this year is be like, it's, it's really useful for the AI project. Well, I, I think you all know like before this, we have to use the physical servers. When you want to spin off something, it just take you like forever, right? But with the cloud now, it's like really fast. What's happening? <laughs> but then, uh, yeah, so that, that helped the AI. And then the last one is the advanced algorithms, right? So with the combination of data and computing storage, now we have a lot more people in the communities, like the data scientists, people who like doing research on AI. So the algorithm is now super advanced. Like you have, we have a lot of library, like if you are using like the, PyTorch or like TensorFlow, right? Those are like new stuff that happening only just these recent years. Yeah, so, so those are the factors that actually contribute to the AI, right? The, the big data, <laughs> is it okay? The big data, the cloud, and then advanced uh, algorithms. Oops. But One moment, please. It keep blinking, so um, <laughs> let's try switching it's okay, the adapter. Yeah. I can keep talking, actually. So, like, yeah. after yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Ah. Okay, so now we have AI, we have big data, and then we have this, like, new word where people are talking about, like, data is a new oil, and, and it's true, right? Because, well, you look at the, the top 10 company in the US in the stock market, like 10 years ago is all oil and gas company, like, uh, you know, like a lot of the oil and gas company. But nowadays, it's all about uh, the tech company here. And they all powered by data driven approach. And they all collect our data, so like every time you post something online. So they collect those data and turn it into their assets, right? Um, so this is why like AI is like becoming super popular. Let me go deeper into this, right? How actually how does AI work? Um, I really like this one because it's, it's super simple. Like I can teach like high school students to understand this. Well, we all know this equation. I hope, right? Is a <laughs> what is this? Is a if you plot this curve, what do you get? Yes, it's exactly, it's just a linear line. It's just like one line going up, right? Uh, so this is just a linear. 
Uh, but then if you look, I want you to look at it like this. So let's say the y variable here. So if, if you want to think about the model, the y is like what you want to predict, right? And then the x is your input. So all the input that you put into your model to predict something, so that's the x. And then the other factor, like the a here, which, well, if you remember the math here, a is like the slope, right? And then b is just the intersection with the y-axis. So these are part of the model, right? Let's say this is just a linear line, but if you make it even more complex, if you have like y equal x, y time, like, you know, just, just add a lot of like variable there, then it becomes super complex. This is where the, the AI actually start, right? So, oops, it's not moving, but. <laughs> so this is actually where the, the AI start. So after you have the linear regression, just that simple line, if you keep, like, keep adding more complexity into it, then you get like this like cubic regression, you get like the machine learning model, et cetera. And there's like, if, if you go into like the sensor TensorFlow playground, uh, there's like this web app that you can keep playing, adding the node, adding the variables, and then you'll see how it can actually capture a more like advanced like data set, right? And then find like a pattern that, that actually match this. So we want to, we, we actually want the model to be able to find the, the complex pattern here. So that's what we have for the AI. And so let me look at a more advanced terminology. So apart from the AI, where well, we have a lot of techniques, right? The machine learning technique inside. So on the left hand side of your right, you have supervised model. So the supervised model is, uh, is, is basically when you want to teach something to the computer, you need to have the label, like you need to have an answer for them. For example, if you teach a model on like, uh, can you call people in this room, right? For the supervised model, you have to teach the model on, okay, first, when you look at the picture here, where is the people? Right. Or if you want the model to know, or like we, we have this like fun memes from the Silicon Valley show where the model try to predict whether is it like food or like pizza, right? Anyone watch the show? But <laughs> so if you want to teach the computer to know whether is this like pizza or like hot dog, then the supervised model, you need to have the label. That means you have to have like thousands of image. And then you tag it that, okay, this is pizza, this is like hot dog, this is hamburger. So that is the supervised model, right? But then on this side, the unsupervised model is actually when you don't have any label, you just like give them a bunch of things and then you just let them do a groupings or do the classification without telling them anything, right? So this technique, well, you use it for more like uh, marketing approach. For example, you have like thousands of customer, you want to send them a personalized message. Uh, in order to send them personalized message, you have to group them into grouping, right? So this grouping, well, you don't know how to group them. Then this is come in place, so you just throw them the data, I mean the model, and then the model itself actually group the people for you. And then they group it by like similarity. There's like a lot of technique to do to do the clustering here. But at the end, you turn this like uh, BSC data into a group. Yeah, and then there's like a lot of insight you can find and you can use it for a lot of purpose. So this is the unsupervised, right? And then you have things here in the middle, the deep learning technique. Well, I put it here because Deep learning actually touch both sides, depend on like which approach you use, which like method you use in deep learning, it can do both stuff. Yeah, so this is basically like machine learning or AI, like one-on-one -on -one for you, right? And then uh, if we go into details, the supervised model, then you have like regressions. Regression here is basically when you want to predict a specific value, like numbers. Let's say you want to predict your demand, uh, the pricing. So these are specific numbers, right? So this is for the regressions. And then for regression, then you have like linear regressions. Um, it's just, there's a lot more thing here. This is just like some samples. And then the classification here, this is where you want to uh, put a label into it. Like the example I said earlier, like the pizza things, 
or like if you want the model to know, hey, is this like apples or is this like uh, other fruit, then this is classifications. And then here you have uh, gradient boosting, random forest, decision trees, uh, actually even logistic regression, you can use it for classification. So these, these are just like techniques, right? Yeah, so yeah, so this is machine learning, right? In a chart forms. Of course, if you want to learn more, then you have to go and find the tools, find the library that help you do this model. There's like a bunch of that online. Oh, I skipped this part. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, the next part, I just want to show you really quickly on the these two, which is called Teachable Machine. This is where uh, you can actually do your own model at home. It's really easy. Well, the Teachable Machine, right, it requires just three simple steps. Well, you go into the tools, which I'm gonna do the demo, right? Hope my live demo work today, but we're gonna show you how to train the model. So you put in the data, uh, all the data sort needed for the model. And then you just train, just click train. There's like a button, very simple. And then after you train the model, you just test the result. It's as simple as that. Let, let me show you the tools and uh, when you go home today, you can actually try this. It's actually super simple. Can we open like a new page? That's the first one. Yeah, so Teachable Machine is actually a tool from Google. It's actually help you do like simple models. Uh, you can go here and like the example here, you can train the model to pick up like, like models. How do you pause or like how do you like do like voice recognition, right? It's, it's all in here and just click, like get started. Yeah, yeah. and then when you go in here, uh, you have like image projects, the audio project or the post project. This is just like fun exercise. And then we're gonna try it today because I just want to show you how easy it is to do it. But note that this is for a demo or like a smaller project, right? If you actually want to do it for like a production grade, uh, system, then this may not work, but it's a fun tool to showcase. Um, what I prepare today, well, of course, as I mentioned, we, we have three boxes here. The first box is where you gather the sample data, which we, we're going to do it soon. And then after that, then you train the models and then you test it out and then you keep iterate, right? And then until you get the perfect model, then you can keep iterating. So this is actually where you train the model. Um, we will try to do a voice, recommend, uh, a voice recognition model, right? Uh, let's imagine maybe like you in like a concert hall or like a conference hall like this, and then you have a requirement from your business team <laughs> that, hey, I want a model to actually recognize whether like in this room, is there like people in it or like, what is the people reaction? Are they happy or like, are they like love your, uh, conference, or they like already get bored, <laughs> right? So that is like a requirement from the business team. So how do you translate that into a model? Well, if it were me, my simple model would be, well, first of all, you need to have the first box, which is the background noise, right? So I need to have a label say that, hey, this is like when no one is talking, this is just like the basic environment, nothing happening here. So I record this when everyone's not here yet. I think only people uh, need This is where like only like a few people in the room. So I already pre-record that. Uh, can you play on one of the boxes? Just to... Oh, I forgot. Is, is there a, can we have a sound? I think it's already playing. I'm not sure whether you heard it, but like, oh, I forgot. Do, do we have a sound from my laptop? If not, it's okay. <laughs> okay. Let's try that. That has, if, if, if not, it's okay. Nah. We can still do this without mm. this one. It's okay. Never mind. So this is like the, the background noise. So if you click play on this, each of the box here is like a short clip of the sounds. And it's just like an, a random voice here. So on the second one, let's let do this. So the second one, I want the model to, uh, let's say, they, um, maybe like, 
ไม่เป็นไรแล้วค่ะไม่เป็นไร The the second model, uh, I want the model to be able to recognize like the, the clapping sounds, like when people actually clap in the room, right? So now, what do you have to do to train the model? Well, you have to give them data, right? So let's do it together. <laughs> oh, 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 and I have to count. Uh, okay, okay, one, two, three, clap. Okay, keep keep clapping. Okay, we need a lot of data. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's actually already enough, right? So we have like X samples, X audio file here. So these two is actually really easy. You just record it, and then it already help you break down the files into like each chunks. Yeah. So this is the clapping sound. Well, let let's do one more. Huh? Add one class. Well, this one requiring your your voice a bit. <laughs> I want to have a model that actually capture when people like shelling, right? Okay, let, let let put a label. Well, first you need a label. So this is actually just like the label or right? shelling, and then again we need the sample data. Okay, ha. Uh, keep keep doing it until we done. Huh? Okay, one two three. โอเคค่ะ Thank you เราไม่ไม่รู้ว่าโหหรือเชียแต่ว่าได้โอเคค่ะ Now now we have all the label right so you have the data you have the training uh, set for the model okay so now you can just train it well this demo you just click train model in real life you have to code this part <laughs> and then you actually have to choose like your model right which technique you're gonna do uh, for the classification and for the voice recognition right so you have to to actually like do the coding but this is just the demo so now okay if I'm not saying anything yeah you you see the the the, the yellow box so that is like the background noise. And this is already the output of the model. So what you can do now, you can test and like, try out the tools until it's perfect. You can keep iterating on this, and that's actually how you work on like real AI project, right? Uh, for this one, you can test together. Let let's do a few clap. Uh, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay, it still works. <laughs> So now then you do see like the the red bar, right? and then if you actually look into this, can we zoom in? It, does it work? I don't know. Uh, yeah, if you zoom in here, you actually see not only the bar, but then you see the numbers, right? So the the important part of the number here is actually the the confident, the confidence score. How the model actually you know telling you that well. Am I confident that this is like crapping or it is just like some random noise? Right. Each of the model in the real project as well, when you will get like confidential score or like accuracy score, there's a lot of metric that tell you about AI model, um, like the F1 score, the confusion metrics. Like there's a lot of terminology, right? But this is important because at the end, you need this to communicate to your business team. How confident are you? Like, how good is the model, right? So these are, you know, just uh, the number that you should keep in mind. Um, let s go. Well, I don't have much time, so I only do one. But like, you can go home and try this one. It's really easy. Just like this, you already got a model, right? Like within like five minutes. Like, how cool is that? So, well, this is just a fun project. But then. When you actually have to do it for your organization or your business, right? Well, you have to turn this into a more serious data. <laughs> Now, instead of like crapping sounds or like a shilling sound, then you need to have these data. Let's say you want to do like a marketing use case. Well, you need to collect data. Right? You need like the first party data, like your user data, the economic index, the social media data. And then you put it in the models, and then you train it just like we do. It could be a bit more advanced, but you know that this is like the simple uh, step. And then on this side, then you get the result. Um, instead of like the cropping model, now you have well, store or like size selection models. You can predict your revenue 
on like let's say if you are like a franchise like Amazon or Internet, you want to expand your uh, site, you pick a location and then you ask the model to help you predict the demand in the location. Right. So that is like super doable. And then you have fraud detections. This is also again one of the model that like I think AI is really good at to detect their abnormality, like the outlier. And then hyper targeting. This is like you get it every day on your mobile phone, right? This is also part of the AI. Uh, mobility planning, this is more NGO, but we, we also have a model that help you detect like immigrant or people moving. So these are see, like the business use case that you can apply the AI to. And if you go back here, like from our fun projects into like a serious project, it's the same step. It's just this three step. Then you just have to apply it to a, you know, a more serious data set, right? Um, things to be mindful of. Well, the demo just now is super simple, but in real life, it's not that simple. You actually have to be mindful. Well, first of all, uh, be explicit about your goals, right? When you teach the model something, you have to be explicit. Um, for example, now when I put the label in the model, where I say shelling, is, is shelling a good word? I'm not sure. If we want to have a more like details or uh, like a description, then we should put it in, right? Because, well, machine learning is powerful, but it's not that smart. It do exactly what it tell you to do. If you put in the long labels, or if you don't have a clear goal, then your model will be like totally messed up. And then uh, shoot the right data set. Um, there's a lot of term on like overfitting, so like bias, right? Uh, if the data set is too small, like what we have now is, is obviously too small for an, an AI model. You have to be careful. For example, let's say if I want to do a model that like, um, actually, I, um, if I want to do a model that let's say you show them a picture of a book, and then it would help you detect like, okay, what, what is this book about? What is the title, right? And then I just keep showing them like photos of books from the bookstore. And then what I show them is all book, let's say in like black and white photos. Uh, and then in real life, then you have like photos from like different lighting, different colors. Of course, your model won't work, right? So this is like just a simple example, but you have to be super careful. If your data, when you train the model, is not good enough, then your model won't perform well in the real setting or in the production settings. And then last one, well, productionizing the model is actually another key challenge. Well, what we have now is like a small model, but when you have to productionize the model, let's say like Facebook now, every time you go to the timeline, there's a model behind the scene. How do you actually make it run in a way that is actually able to serve like millions of customers, right? That is actually the real challenge. How do you build the pipeline so it actually retrain itself, improving the model, you know, keep getting the new data. So these are actually the, the real uh, pain and you have to set up a lot of pipeline. You need your data engineer team. You need to have your ML ops, right? So this is the real challenge. What we have now is just a, a demo. So now, like, let's come to what? What time is it? How many minutes do I have? <laughs> okay, the last ten minutes. <laughs> We finally touched AI, <laughs> so it's actually it's actually I, I I it's actually the same with the other software project, right? You have to break it down into a smaller pieces. You have to start small. Well, I wouldn't say much about this because you have been through a lot of like AI project conference, but it's it's quite basic. Just start from like an MVP or POC, so you know like you get a sense of what it is. This is quite important because. A lot of company, let's say they, they come to me like as a consultant, and then the senior management would be like, oh, I want to have this and that. I want to have like a personal like campaign target all my customers. I want to have the churn predictions. And then all the vision is like super big, right? So what you have to do is you have to break it down and then you start from a smaller step. This is important because when you start small, although it's not like perfect, but 
the good thing is that people in your organization would learn how to work with you on that, right? And this is important because, well, AI is still pretty new. And if you keep them wet, let's say if you keep them wet for like a year to see some result, that is not going to work, right? The management will not wait for you. So, well, cut it down and then do an MVP, right? Well, I don't talk about this because, well, I think everyone here knows MVP, but uh, having a quick win is important for you to actually get started. Then you get a buy-in, you get more budget later when you have a quick result to show the management team, right? And uh, I just want to, to stay here a bit. Well, when you have a few quick wins, right? This is the time and effort. This is the improvements. After you have a few quick wins, then what do you do after that? Well, I, I would say you should start doing like unsilo and scales. And this is a bit unique for the data project, not like the other software project, because the importance of unsilos or like scales here mean that, well, after you have a few quick wins, small model, what you should focus next after people already aware of like the potential of AI is that you need to have a central data platform. And this is imp important because if you don't have this, uh, when you want to have an AI model, let's say like a marketing model predicting a demand, but then the other department also need to have this demand data, right? Like the operation team, the logistic team, and most of the time in our organization, data, the data is set in each department, super silos, not connecting. And that is actually not good when you have data in two separate places. Then how do you say which one is the truth? That's the first problem. And then secondly, like when you want to collaborate, it's really hard, right? So most of the time we suggest company to uh, let unsilo the data by having a central data platform. And then people can collaborate on top of the platform itself. So that could be like AWS or GCP, could be a basic data lake or warehouses. Well, the data lake could be as basic as like just setting up S3. Right, and then you just dump all the file there, and then after that, then you can use other warehouse to like uh, it will have like red chips, Athena, or if it's on TCP, then you bring in like BigQuery on top to do the analytics, right? And then after that, then you do a more like broaden use case, but then you focus on like the cultural change. How do you actually train the people who are learning the day-to-day -day work to? consume your data to look at the dashboard or even use the dashboard or build it themselves, right? This is like the, the end goal that we want to have. Uh, and then how do you actually select the use case, right? Well, you, you want to start from all, but then how do you select the first one? Uh, selecting the first one is as simple as this, like uh, the X axis is the data feasibility. Data feasibility mean that if you have the data, and if the data is uh, enough to build the model, then this should be one of your priorities. It also means that it will create like a lower effort, right? More data means that you don't have to go and sort for data or buy data from outside. And then after you have the data feasibility, then you have to look at the business impact. Well, this is important. Well. Uh, you don't want to build something that is, doesn't have impact to the business, of course. So if you combine these two axes, impact and then data, then you get this boxes here. So this is like the model where you will be no regret. It means that, well, you have a good model, you have enough data, and then it also have high impact, right? So that is your first priority when you prioritize the model. And then after that, then you have other part where it could be a quick win, maybe the impact is a bit lower, but it's still okay. Or you have this one, which is like high impact, but then low data feasibilities. This one need a little bit more collaboration. So it could be maybe like a, a second or third use case, right? Um, yeah, so this is how you prioritize and then get start on the projects. Another angle which is as important, which is more on the uh, business teams, right? After you have this, this circle is from the previous page, right? Where you have <laughs> this is the, the, the one from previous page where you have like data, feasibility, impacts. Well, you also have to look at the business team. Are they available? This is like the, the simple, the same with the agile scam project, right? If they're not available, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to give you data, then 
don't do it, right? That's <laughs> simple. And then make sure it's aligned with your company strategic focus. So this is mean that like, um, if your company is now on a mode where they want to like save costs, right? Then you should do a model that will help them automate something, cutting down costs. If the company is on like a mission to like drive sales, well, you should do a model that drives sales. So make sure it's aligned. Like just don't focus on, hey, I have this data and I want to build this cool model, right? It, it won't work like that. So this is how you prioritize, right? Um, last one before we wrap off here. How do you actually uh, select? the uh, use case, or I, I, I love to call it a minimum viable model, right? Uh, just to sum up, well, first select the use case that you don't have like regret, right? High impact, uh, high data feasibility. Well, second, consider your organization nature. This is just to wrap up, right? So uh, make sure the business team uh, want to work with you. Make sure you have a clear decision makers. Uh, who is the uh, high authorized person who can like sign off the budget, who will agree with you, who want to support you on giving you data, and then make sure the use case align with the company focus. Last one, so the last one, define your minimum viable model. So this is where after you select the use case, you have to work on selecting your data set, the models, and then finally like form the product. Well, this, this one is important. So let's say you want to build a model. Let's say you want to build a uh, 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 like generic use case, like personal like campaign. Uh, this one still too broad, right? You have to define specifically, like what is the personal like campaign will do? do? Does it help you stop people from churning? Does it help you promote more sales, upsell or cross sales, right? You have to define specific requirement. And then that will become your minimum viable like data set and model for you to choose, right? Don't do something that like cover everything in the world, like select a, a specific one. And then after that, then you would have to define your own criteria. What is the success metrics for this model, right? Does it have to beat your existing process? Like a lot of the time I talk to the client, okay, we're gonna do demand predictions. How do you know, is it good enough? Right, you have to have a certain KPI. So I would say, okay, we have to at least do better than what your team already doing, right? Or on the other hand, well, you can talk to the business team and then say that, hey, the model should have maybe like a 60 or 70% accuracy score, right? So this is your criteria. But be mindful, don't talk to the business team that want you to do like 100% accuracy because it's never gonna happen, right? So that one thing to be mindful of. And then last one, you have to know the limitation of machine learning models. It's, it's not magic, it's far from magic, right? Or I would have people come to me asking me like a lot of like random stuff, like can you do this and that? And you have to be mindful because well, people come to me and ask me, can you have an AI model that actually help me write report? Uh, so something like this, you have to know that okay, well, it's not that advanced yet, and especially if you want like a Thai report, we're still a bit farther away from that in terms of like Thai in LP, right? Uh, so know the limitations, and then know like what you should or shouldn't do for the AI model. And this is just the three step. How do you get start? <laughs> well, I I think that's all on my agenda, and <laughs> really cool thing. <laughs> but that's actually why I'm here. Oh, we are recruiting a lot of people. If you interest, like go to my uh, company website. We open for a bunch of uh, data engineer, even the consultant roles or the PM roles or the researcher role. <laughs> yeah, so so that's actually all. Thank you so much, and uh, yeah, we can have Q and A. I think I think I'm on time. Right on three forty-five. <laughs> you have. You can share me, ha. Me have a line, me ha. It was really cool blend, and blend. Safe. Oh, yeah, Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you very much for sharing uh, about the AI and the data project to apply with the data. I think this is a. Uh, quite interesting the topic for us for today. So we have like a. 
a gift oh, for okay. our speaker as well. For thank you so much. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.